Okay, so this is a quick demo of Clear Dental. This is just going to go over some of the key concepts and what is completed so far. Uh, there are a number of things that I cannot demo simply because I do not have a ray graph machine in front of me. But um, later on, I can actually demo some of the things for ray graph. So anytime you do see a ray graph, it will in fact be fake data. As a matter of fact, this patient is fake, so you don't have to worry about HIPAA. So there are two main concepts to keep in mind with Clear Dental. The first concept is that data is shown based on what is needed, regardless of where the data is actually being stored. So <clears throat> if you need to see a bite wing radiograph when you're doing your periodontal diagnosis, it should be something that is relevant, therefore it is shown, rather than care about which database contains which information. The other key concept is that this user interface can be used either with a touch screen or with a keyboard and mouse. Although I am going to be demoing everything using a keyboard and mouse, everything here is touch friendly. Having said that, let's actually go over the preferences module. So the preferences module is for the providers and the location. So a provider can be a doctor, a hygienist, or a specialist, or any kind of front desk personnel. So here we're going to manage two of the employees. I put myself in there and a fake hygienist. Um, when it comes to managing a single general dentist, you want to have the basic information. Uh, some of the things I included is just the license ID and PI number, DA number, mostly for making it more streamlined when you do something like a prescription or when you are sending out to the lab, you need to have your license ID. Um, having other preferences like saying how much time you want for each procedure can be very useful. Of course, this is going to be a provider by provider preference. So if some person is really fast at doing extractions while the other person is really slow at doing extractions, um, the system would automatically know how to schedule the patient based on who is the provider for that particular treatment. Um, there's also preferences on what kind of treatment that is done. So in my case, I can do surgical extractions, but I don't do fully impacted third molars. Therefore, automatically, any kind of impacted third molar extractions would be referred out to either a different provider or to a different location. It wouldn't automatically be assigned to me. Um, things like implants, root canals, similar idea. So let me also go over some of the basics of the user interface. So you may have noticed that when I selected providers, you have a green button for adding something. That is going to be more or less consistent throughout the entire clear dental system. Um, edit is going to be edit. Anything that is red is either going to delete something or close something. On the upper right is always going to be the close button. Upper left will have a special kind of menu bar item that's either going to go back or be able to modify something that you're working on. And if I were to go back again, you would notice that on the bottom left is going to be either a save button or move forward button. On the bottom right will be an alternate button and it will be based on the context that you're working in. But I try to use more the corners rather than the actual center to prevent any kind of misclick. So you will save when you want to save and you will not mistakenly hit it when you're trying to modify something along the center. And actually let's go over Mr. Ken Shin. <laughs> who's a hygienist and um, similar idea you can set what kind of preferences that he or she would be able to do. And then for locations, um, there are multiple providers that own different physical locations. So let's just say you're in one practice Monday, Tuesday 
and you could be a different practice Wednesday, Thursday, and you may want to still have patients that come from one practice that can still visit the other practice. Therefore, you want to have a system in which the two practices can talk to each other, but you don't want to have everything exactly the same. So rather than just having a simple clone, why don't we just have per location preferences? So basic location information, address, zip code, website, um, you can set the hours and also the lunch break. So the thing about setting the lunch break is that you can say, okay, I have a lunch break for how long? Okay, 30 minutes and starting at what time? That way you don't mistakenly schedule patients during your lunch break. So that can all be saved. And then this is something that's actually per practice. I think it's a good idea to have for your practice a consistent amount of time on when you want to do your recare exams, when you want to do your bite wings, how often the periodontal chart is updated. I think although providers may have different ideas on when things should be updated, I still believe that it's still better to have it as a practice-wide preference rather than a provider preference. And practice by practice, they're going to have default materials. Not every practice is going to have every material. And you can see here that I put in some default ones here, like OptiBond. Uh, the Matrix, that's something I just put it as a default, but you can say Garrison Compositide or Toffenmeyer. Default Liner, you can do Duralon, Cotton Rolls. I can say uh, I like to use Relyx Unisem. And can patients decline radiographs? Maybe with consent form? No, without a consent form. So it's all up to you. It's how you want to run your practice, what type of material you want to do. I mean, if you just don't like to use any of what I recommend, you can just say some other liner. And then when you're doing your case notes, it will take that into account. It'll also try to take that into account when you're doing the actual procedure itself. But we'll get to that a little bit later. So consent forms are all digital. So the patient can actually use the touchscreen monitor as a signature pad. So you don't need to have a separate signature pad. And you can customize it for um, every practice that you are working at. So what these are are more or less defaults. If you want to change them, you can. It can accept any kind of rich text form, and you can customize it the way you want to. Similar idea of post-op instructions. I just don't have any defaults here right now. And then pricing is just the base price. It doesn't take into account what the dental plans would pay. Whatever you want to have as your base price, you can have it in here and it will automatically use this for all of your future <clears throat> treatment plans. So I'm just going to go back again. So one thing you to also notice is that this is using a light color scheme. Uh, the nice thing about the technology that I'm using, which is called um, QML Cute Quick Controls, is that it's really easy to retheme your entire control set. So this is using the light theme. Here it is again using a dark theme. So if you want a more white on black kind of theme, it will actually work just the way you would expect it to, colors and all. So, and now let's go over the comprehensive exam. So, um, we're going to have this fake patient, Mr. Wayne Breno. On the left here are all the diagnostic buttons. So these are kind of like a wizard. You want to go through one by one with each one of these buttons to complete your D0150 exam. This will have all the summary of all your findings, and then you have your final treatment plan here. So the idea is that you go through one by one by one by one, and then you complete your exam, and then you're finished with your 150. Now, 
you are allowed to skip certain steps. If you don't feel that they are necessary or you don't do them in general, then you can always remove the buttons entirely. But by default, it shows a lot of the buttons that is normally for most practitioners. So let's just first overview the patient information, which is the basic patient name, just personal information about the patient, the home address, it's pretty straightforward, phone numbers. Um, you can even put in the patient's Facebook ID, Instagram, WhatsApp. Um, that way, if you want to contact them through other means besides just email or text messaging or phone calls, you can still Facebook message them and you know where to find them. Work information, emergency contact, and uh, patient preferences, so you can put in things like what kind of language that they would normally like to speak in, um, available day, so that way by default it knows what the patient would like to come in for the next appointment, prefer times for that appointment, um, method of actually contacting them. So if they really don't like text, me text messaging or getting a phone call, they really just want a WhatsApp update, you can do that. So you can get any kind of integration as you want for WhatsApp and it will be based on the patient, not on your practice. And then which doctor that they like to see. And of course I put myself as default. So I'm just going to save everything here. So now you will notice that the yellow flag turned green. That means that I completed that module. Yellow means I haven't even touched it yet. So let's go over vitals. So Vitals are like anything you'd probably expect. I'm going to put in a blood pressure of, uh, I don't know, 133, 123 over 97. And of course, it warns you that this patient has stage 2 hypertension with this fake data. So I'm just going to put more reasonable data, well, a little bit more reasonable. Uh, and then respiratory rate, 20, 97, height. Six one one seven five. It'll give you a quick BMI uh, calculation, and then for pain, there's a little Easter egg of. <laughs> but today he's doing just fine. So notice that I put the height and weight in for this first time, and let's just say he comes in a couple weeks later, and I want to retake his vitals. The nice thing is that it's going to pre-populate the height and weight beforehand and if there's any kind of significant difference you can update them as needed. And then let's go over medical review. So you can add conditions that the patient has. Now if you're using the new patient form module this will automatically be populated with information. But for this example, I'm starting with completely blank data. So I'm going to add a quick condition. Um, it's going to be diabetes. And just additional information is going to be last A1C was 7.4%. So I'm just going to save that. Um, medications. Let's add a medications. Um, let's just say it's, I don't know, ibuprofen. Okay, so there is autocomplete for the most common types of medications. And then I am just going to say it's used for. And then is using it PRN. And just save that. And then for allergies, same idea. Um, dogs, I would say. And then reaction, just moderate, save. And then let's just say there's no other surgeries or anything that we need to go on for the medical history. I'm just going to close out. Now you can see 
on the summary of findings, it's actually updated the conditions, the allergies, and medications as a quick summary. That way you don't have to go back to the module again if you want a really quick review. Now, as I said before, I don't have an x-ray machine here, so I can't show you the radiographs, and I don't have this particular patient's all nine pictures of intraoral and extraoral photographs, so I can't show that module either. So I'm going to go straight to the extraoral exam. Now, um, some doctors will skip this, so you don't have to push that button if you don't want to. But for people who do want to do an extraoral exam, this is mainly for you. So the key things is that there are going to be some pain on palpations in certain locations. You might feel a nodule. You want to be able to record that down really quickly. So let's just say as you were palpating the head and neck, you felt on the submandibular node pain on the um, left side. So you can say pain on palpation submandibular nodes left. Pretty simple and easy. And then as you're looking at the bite, you can check for any opening or closing deviation. So you can say deviation or deflection based on how you are actually seeing it open. And you say opening and you can say to the left. And then I can see even close. And then similarly, now you can see in an extra oral exam, it has just a quick summary just in case you forgot what you might have written down earlier. And then this is all scrollable. And then intraoral exam is a very similar idea. So you have the tongue through your mouth, what kind of findings you find there. Even for um, class two occlusion, you can see if it's div one or div two. It will give you a quick reminder of the difference between class, I mean division one and division two. Um, what kind of attrition the patient has, and then I can save and close. And then, of course, it updates again in the intraoral exam. Now, I put oral cancer screen as its own line because it is technically a combination of your intraoral exam and extraoral exam. So rather than put it as part of either module, I think it's part of the exam itself. So here you can say positive or negative. Now, charred missing teeth doesn't have a flag, mostly because there is not necessarily need for every patient to do this kind of module. This is for a situation where there are multiple teeth that are missing, and it will make the periodontal charting a lot easier. Let me just make an example. So this is a young guy, so let's just say that only his thirds are missing. So I would just say all thirds. So you can see 1, 32, 16, and 17 are all now recorded as missing. You can do additional teeth if you want to, or if you really have a situation where he has no maxillary teeth, you can just say all maxillary, and then just save appropriately. And then we go to the periodontal charting. OK. so. This will take a while if I were to do every tooth and every side, but just to give you an idea of how the periodontal exam works is that you have your periodontal pockets, you have your recession, bleeding, mobility, and for any kind of molar tooth, you have your furcation involvement. Now, because this patient is missing tooth number one, it goes straight to tooth number two. Now, the idea is that you could be alone and you may not necessarily have an assistant that is recording all of your periodontal depths. So without having to lose your train of thought, without having you to lose where you are in the mouth, the idea is that you can do your periodontal pockets really easily from a far distance. So you have these really big numbers that fill up the screen for the periodontal pockets. If you do, by chance, have a patient that has more than an 8 millimeter pocket, you can, of course, go all the way up to 15. So it starts going from the mesial, I mean, from the distal to the mesial, because normally when you are working in the mouth, 
you go from the patient's right to their left, especially if you're working on tooth number two. So let's start off with two, three, two. So it has a pocket depth of that, and then you can add any recession if there are any recession, and then you just say next tooth. Um, if there's any bleeding, you can say it's in the central area. So I'm working right now on the buccal side. So this is still assuming you're on the buccal. This is now tooth number three. So you can say three, three, two. Now there is a module for voice recognition. However, it is not very reliable at this point. It's using Mozilla Deep Speech. Once it is more reliable, I'll have it turn on by default. But for now, it is right now off. So I'm going to go a little bit further, 232. Two. And just for t um, today's demo, I'm going to assume that tooth number five is really, really strange and has a lot of deep pocketing and has even some recession too. So tooth number five is in big trouble. And I am just not going to finish up the rest of this exam. I'm just going to close out for now. So even though that I didn't truly finish the periodontal charting, because I did go over it today, it still shows up as a green flag, knowing that I at least touched it. Now let's go over periodontal diagnosis and treatment planning, which is its own separate thing. So, as I said earlier, all the radiographs that you see are fake. Under normal circumstances, all the radiographs you see here would be on the proper quadrant. Obviously, this is not all the same quadrant. So you would be able to see the actual radiograph. Um, it would be the bite wings and the PAs and also the pan of that quadrant. So you actually see the same pan in all four of them. So you have four different quadrants, and then it has all the numbers of the teeth that are in that quadrant. Now, the grayed out means it's a missing tooth, therefore not really relevant. Green means either you checked the pocket depths and it was perfectly fine, or you didn't find anything wrong. So green means good. Red means there's pretty deep and orange means it's between four and six um, millimeters of um, a clinical attachment loss. So if I were to just click on two, it would give you a more detailed summary of that one particular tooth. If I were to go on number five, it would come up with the reason why is it that five is red. And then when it comes to treatment planning, you could have more fine scale of saying, okay, for this particular quadrant, let's do SCRP and then do no particular special treatment here. Or if you feel that you want to do full mouth SCRP, it actually grays out all of the localized treatment because there's really no reason to do your quad scaling twice. So that's the reason why it does that. Now for the actual diagnosis, you could have um, a number of different diagnoses. Um, the gingivitis is kind of straightforward. You can have slight, moderate, or severe gingivitis. For periodontitis, um, this is actually using the new diagnosis standard um, from the 2017 recommendation. So there is a stage and a grade for your periodontitis. So for stage, it's based on how it looks like right now. If you ever forget how it looks like, there's always a little bit of a quick update. And then for the grade, you can set that. And then for certain situations, you may have a patient that you just saw for the first time, and you may not know what the real grade is because you are seeing this patient now, not the last five years. So you don't know how far it has progressed. So I'm just going to save this and then I'm going to go over now hard tissue charting. 
Now, there's two ways to go about heart tissue charting, and it depends on the situation of the patient. If you have a patient that has very little going on, then you may want to go to the second option. So what it'll just ask you is, hey, select a tooth, and I could say, all this patient has in the entire mouth is on tooth number eight, and all there is is an existing composite, and it's like an MI composite. That is it and then you are basically done. Now, when you go back here, it says eight has been looked at. So that way you don't go over twice. But this is more for situations where there's very little going on and you don't want to go through tooth by tooth. But let's just say that there is a lot going on. So you would actually have something like this where um, the current tooth is right now eight, but you can go back and say, okay, I'm gonna just start over with tooth number two. I'm gonna say there's an existing, you know, occlusal amalgam, looks fine. Save next tooth. Let's just say on tooth number three, there is occlusal decay. And so I'm going to do an occlusal composite. So on the left here, you have your ray graphs. Under normal circumstances, this would be your bite wing and your PA for the current tooth that you're looking at. It would also um, use the last known periodontal probing depth. So here we did as just an example at 332. And then for your treatment plan, you can make multiple treatment plans. You can have your primary or you can have your secondary. So that way you can have a plan A, B, and C to present with your patient. And then the patient can decide which one to go with. So I'm just going to just do one more. Um, for Let's just say number four has an existing crown. Now for crowns, um, I'm right now doing just a limited number of materials. Now, there are these abbreviations that are being used. In case you have any question about what they mean, you just have to click on it. So that's stainless steel, porcelain fused to metal, full cast gold, zirconia, and lithium disilicate. And then save and move on. I'm just going to close it right now. And now you can see over here that the primary treatment plan composite and then it uses the same 125 that was um, from your preferences so there still needs to be more work done to be for the fix and removal partial denture but that would be the next step so if there were any missing teeth you have the option of either making a bridge or placing an implant or you can think about using a removable partial denture or maybe a full denture. It depends on the situation and it would have a user interface just for that. The final review of the treatment plan would be similar to this, but you can actually phase your treatment plan and set the order. Right now, by default, everything is unfazed. Um, later on, I'm going to make it such that all fillings are going to be phase two and all crowns will be phase three and all periodontal treatment will be phase one um, and then of course all your recares would be phase four um, but that is it as far as a comprehensive exam not fully completed as th this point now let's go over the extraction so let's just say we're doing extraction on tooth number three so this is the basic idea of how the layout would look like. Um, so for the consent form, you want to do that first before you do anything else. Um, it likes to remind you, hey, did you do the consent form? So the consent form is the same one that you saw earlier when we were looking at the practice preferences. So the patient can use their thumb or stylus to make some kind of signature and then complete the signature. Now the consent form is signed. Um, now the medical history is updated based on the um, patient's situation. So you can say ibuprof I mean, you can do another medical review and uh, see if there's any updates. But otherwise, it'll show the conditions and medications. You can see the current radiographs, 
same situation where they're fake right now simply because I don't have any real array graphs to use right now. But it would show normally the bite wing and the PA for that tooth and potentially the pan as well. So over here is today's appointment. So if you're working on just one tooth today, it would just show that one tooth. If you're working on multiple teeth, it would show all the teeth. And then for local anesthetics, you can keep track over here. So let's just say you already administered two septicanes, and then you have to do one more. You just have to tap the button one more time, and then it'll keep track of how many you've done. And then when you are about to complete your procedure, um, it will actually put that into your case note. Um, it has options for saying, okay, did you have to use peritomes? Did you have to section the tooth? Any kind of socket preservation? If you did, okay, what kind of grafting material did you have to use? So that way you can incorporate it to your um, case notes accordingly. Even what kind of sutures that you would normally use, or if you had to make a flap, what kind of removal tool that you had to use, and whatever remaining treatments. You finish up the procedure. Do you want to print, email, or text the post-op instructions? Do the patient tolerate well? And then for making a new prescription, that's a separate module that will be launched. So you have the Rx state. You can put any drug you want, but it has automatically all of the most commonly used um, medications that's done by dentists. So if you want to do clindamycin, it'll automatically say the reason. It'll even have the proper strength, QID, how many days, is the more or less the standard for that kind of um, antibiotic. And when you change your drug, it automatically updates everything else. So it's normally 500-125, and then BID, not QID. So it will remember what is the most logical way to go about it, even if you did something like Vicodin. So, and then you can print a copy here, but um, there is going to eventually be a module for connecting to certain pharmacies, so that way you can do e-prescription. That is still being worked on right now. So I can just save and send that Rx, and then you can complete the procedure. So that is it for now. Um, there's still some more modules that I can't show at this moment, but they are still being actively worked on. The minimal viable product is still on set for August 1st of this year, and I'll show updates as they come along.